Let's do it in the morning. I gotta get home. I'm tired and I gotta get home. God! God! Fuck! Get it! Oh! Oh! All tears flow from the same source. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to be making sense of life through Beatrice at dinner. The brief summary. Summary. How do you say it? Samari. Samari, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think you say it's Samari. Um, to summarize the yeah. synopsis, it follows Beatrice as she goes to dinner, living on her own. She's a holistic yeah, cancer holistic healer. Yeah, cancer healer, yeah. She goes to do her work with uh, this one client, and she ends up, her car breaks down at their place. So she tells the, the person that. The wife offers that she can stay for dinner while she waits for a friend to help her with her car. And uh, then most of the movie is uh, her having an awkward dinner with the guests that yeah. are at the party. Did we mention the name of the movie? Yeah, she dinner. Okay. It was a dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Diagonally. Huh? So we just watched it and I'm very... Raw. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say two main things came up for me. Class and migration. I think the thing that hurt me the most, which I'm getting sad over. I mean, I guess it's, it's, a, it's, it's both, but... I suppose it was the thing that really hit me hard was the immigration aspect of it because mm -hmm. Beatrice is from Mexico and she came to the U.S. with the help of relatives that were living in the U.S. because there were protests. She was involved in a protest back home against the usual story. Yeah. Big Western or American conglomerate goes yeah. to a more disadvantaged country yeah. to source some kind of either resources yeah. or, to, or to displace villages and by building some hotel or yeah, resort. For their own financial gains. Yeah. And that's her story. And this man that is the guest of honor at this dinner of her, her, client. her client's yeah. husband, he is, you know, the worst of the one percent basically mm -hmm. the whole time the whole dinner is beatrice realizing who this person is mm -hmm. their first encounter really is where he's asking her to refill his mm -hmm. drink mm -hmm. because he just automatically assumes oh okay well you're you're the help she then says no i'm not i'm actually a guest like you are mm -hmm. and he's visibly shocked by that mm -hmm. and they have a bit of a conversation which then leads to him asking where are you really from mm -hmm. and then she shares well i was born in mexico and then later did you come here legally mm -hmm. oh good thing you have a job good thing you're contributing i just wanted to be sure i wasn't surprised by him you know he is that kind of person he's someone who is financially privileged mm -hmm. and it's not to say that everybody who's financially privileged mm -hmm. is like that that's what i'm saying the yeah. worst of yeah people who are financially privileged yeah and so yeah so there are those immigration elements there that really hit me hard mm -hmm. because the questions that he poses to her like did you come here legally it is so ignorant of the main realities mm -hmm. of being an immigrant. I think this guy, his name, what, Doug Strutt, yeah. right? He's the kind of person who believes that if you are coming from Mexico and you move to the US, you're pushing for the American dream. Mm -hmm. You know, in his mind, that's what migrants move to the US for. Mm -hmm. Completely ignorant of the fact that there's a whole hardship that comes from being a migrant. You know, there are migrants who move there willingly looking for that American dream, but everyone loses as a migrant, even if you're moving there for what you're thinking is a more westernized life than an yeah. Up, yeah like you, if you're looking at moving as an opportunity you still you, you still lose things like roots, culture, culture roots you know yeah. let's say you start you you move there you find someone you fall in love you have kids mm -hmm. there's so many things like reference points that mm -hmm. you're never going to be able to share with the people that you love your kids are going to be so different from you you're going to be stuck in this perpetual state of assimilating and learning each time without pass down your personal 
life experience because where you are, it doesn't matter anymore. And so all of these things that made you who you are before you even came to this place, all these things that have so much meaning, carry so much meaning for you, you can't really revel in them as you would back where you're from with people who you wouldn't even have to explain them to. They would just understand because yeah. this is something that they personally experienced yeah. too. But then even worse, when you're an immigrant who was forced to move because of poverty or war, mm -hmm. like Beatrice was, mm -hmm. she's forced to move because of conflict within her yeah. country or where yeah. she's her community. Yeah. And she is still pining so much for... <laughs> she's still longing so so deeply for her home later when she um she's alone at that still at the at the home at kathy's place she calls neroli i hope i'm i'm not butchering the name but she's like do you remember it seems just like yesterday when we were yeah. playing in the was it the mangrove yeah it? and she's like are they still there mm -hmm. you know is the place basically that i love yeah. still that way yeah <sighs> Me gustaría regresar ahí contigo en un bote. And that's one of the things, you know, you go back to this place that you love, that you had such a connection to, mm -hmm. and you, you go back and it's not even there anymore. Yeah. And it's like, again, that part of you is gone forever. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff that I think people like Doug Strutt in this movie never think of because it's such an ethnocentric view of analyzing people mm -hmm. that you perceive as outsiders. Mm -hmm. You have this sense that where you're from, your culture is so superior mm -hmm. to anyone else's and that the only way logically to you the yeah. only way, reason that anybody would move to this culture of mine yeah. which is better than yours is because you yeah. understand the same yeah. you, you see me the same way you understand yeah. that I'm superior to you yeah. and you're lucky to be here yeah. not realizing that what you consider mm -hmm. to be a valuable yeah. existence isn't the same mm -hmm. is, is not what someone else could consider that and even in that whole dinner party everybody has very little understanding or even interest to understand Mm -hmm. where Beatrice is coming from to see someone else's point of view to remove themselves from what the ideal that is their life mm -hmm. versus the ideal what she considers an ideal mm -hmm. the movie does a good job of showing all the guests just having a lot of blank stares or a lot of they seem very cut off uh, emotionally just kind of in terms of being able to be a human around other humans you know it's a it's a lot of they're burying well they're burying all their feelings there's a lot of envy obviously anytime you've got people coming over to a dinner and there's other people and it's all comparing it's like look at my dog room and like it's all just showing off everyone is trying to show off or to upstage right and all their conversation is about who's making more or like who's doing what you know it's all competition all the time holiday. going on you a holiday here too. yeah you yeah. should come here you should come too but it's still kind of like I'm inviting you to this thing we had the idea so we're still better than you but yeah you can tag along if you want like it's all trying to get one up on each other and when you do that you can't connect and feel closer to people so it's all a game they can't just let loose and let go and not worry about how they're perceived Received. It's all hyper intensely. Who's being judged? How am I being judged? How am I judging them? Right? So they can't actually just be themselves and actually get to know each other on a more meaningful level. It's all vapid conversation. And when Beatrice tries to talk about things, about the story about when uh, her dad was kicking an octopus, or about back home and, and you know, how, how many people are struggling there, and she's like, I wonder what it's like there, if it's worse, or how is it? Anytime she tries to have more meaningful conversation, they just can't handle it and they yeah. try and change the subject. They still see themselves as the superior culture. A superior way of living, yet she is way more in touch with herself and nature and the world and living than they are. There was such a stark contrast yeah. between these two worlds, Beatrice's yeah. world and these people's worlds, yeah. right? Like these are, it's a very palpable class divide, yeah. right? And I think the thing about it as well is how much of an impact it has on relationships with people because this lady, Kathy, very well-meaning, mm -hmm. she's going on and on about how beautiful Beatrice is, what a beautiful soul, yeah. you know. Beautiful she, singer and she's yeah. such a kind person to so much for her daughter all and this she's stuff. so yeah. intelligent yeah. you know singing her praises throughout in the end there's this relationship of theirs even when she's working yeah. she will listen Beatrice yeah. talks about her experiences mm -hmm. you know you can tell that she's really attentive yeah. to Beatrice mm -hmm. and so superficially like if yeah. you if you look at their relationship you think you know what despite their cult their, their class differences yeah. including as well as cultural differences yeah. these two people can be friends yeah, are friends, they're friends. They're close. Yeah. yeah she's very complicit in her in how her reaction 
reality affects other people. She's kind at the end. In, well, she in her mind. Mm -hmm. Here, have money. It's going to be expensive. I yeah. understand that you're struggling. But it's like, I would have preferred her to be kind before. Yeah. When Doug was yeah. being so abrasive. Yeah. Instead of just trying privilege. to appease everybody and be like, okay, let's just forget that happened. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's in her mind, she doesn't realize the transactional move towards giving her money for the tow truck is the is meaningless to someone who's very empathic and sensitive as Beatrice is where she's like I know this your world is money everything revolves around that but for me this is not a sincere gift this means nothing to me and this is why you don't actually know me at all exactly because you doing this Which, yeah. I mean is, is pointless it's kind of offensive to me yeah that that's your way of resolving this with those kinds of relationships it will only it, it, it could only go so far. There is a level of comfort that Kathy has with the lifestyle that Doug Strutt perpetuates. Grant, the husband, says, look, this is my guest when he's mm -hmm. talking to Beatrice. Mm -hmm. This house, you yeah. know, I have this he house. This. He yeah. paid for this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is Kathy's reality. Mm -hmm. Beatrice is so against this man yeah. that gave Ka Kathy this mm -hmm. comfortable reality. Mm -hmm. And so how can these two people yeah. really have that close relationship yeah. that Kathy, as you know, assumes yeah. that they have? Which I think is why so many people are complicit to a degree. And maybe sometimes they feel more guilty or less. Like, say, Kathy probably isn't. If she knew about all the um, displacement of natural habitats or people people because Doug wants to build another property somewhere. Kathy might not even be supportive of that, but she can only protest so much because her livelihood is based on what Doug does, right? And that's where I think you get a lot of people that are like, kind of sucks, but my hands are tied. I can't really, I can only ever do symbolic gestures or only kind of do some clicks or likes or shares of links because really I can never, I cannot really uh, bite the hand that feeds that much. Exactly. Yeah. At one point when he talks about hunting, he's like, I've experienced all the worldly pleasures of the world. Because again, it's kind of a, a boasting thing, but it's wrapped in like a, here's a piece of wisdom I'm going to share, but it's still boasting. Everything is about boasting and showing off. And then he says, but like hunting this rhino, it was better than any drug, any experience ever. And it's, again, it's something like you would, you would read a poem or something about trying to get back to human nature and trying to find something pure and the pure essence of something. But he's doing this as like the, a, sport. a sport. And he's talking about how it's, it's the greatest thrill. Because again, they're so detached from everything that everything is a game. There's nothing about connecting. But what? Why are you murdering this creature? Are you going to do anything, or are you just doing it as a trophy? Take a picture, upload it on social media, and that's it. Yeah, Not I mean, one of the things that like he talks about the way he talks, all of it is just he knows that certain things are a marker of power and yeah. dominance. Things like poaching are illegal. Like this movie is like set in 2017. Yeah. At this point, if you are hunting, you are most likely doing it mm -hmm. illegally. But then you have the power to do that and get away with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very rich people can mm -hmm. do that if they want to. And he understands that. And I think this is why everybody outside of Beatrice panders to him and why Beatrice is so frustrated is like the reality is Doug has cultural capital mm -hmm. in the world. The world is so centered around money mm -hmm. and wealth, you know, capitalism dictates a certain kind of worth accomplished yeah, yeah a certain kind of worth or value and says yeah. these are the many yardsticks you yeah. know like outside of money you have a certain house you live a certain place you go on vacation you go kill you go poaching in africa all of these things are indicative of how successful you are at attaining the capitalist dream no matter how much the other people grant and the other guests may dislike mm -hmm. doug mm -hmm. and most likely even hate groveling yeah. who likes to grovel at yeah. the end of the day yeah. they understand that this is the world that we live in yeah. and i have to play the game all of us to a degree play the game in little ways because we're all forced to do it yeah, they're not really affected he said oh that might be illegal and they're like eh, i'm a lawyer i'll get you off because they all feel like they have enough influential positions or jobs that laws laws are a joke to them or they they just they feel untouchable they feel like things don't apply to them yeah. which is why i think beatrice is like at some point it's going to get reached you you can't keep living like this forever and just ignore everything else that's going on that's the problem there's just way too many people you think that you can hide up here behind these gates and that everything is going to be all right no it's coming for what the you fuck is going on okay that's enough mm -hmm. it will touch you you're done come on it's uncomfortable for them to hear because no one wants to feel like they're a bad person so they have to either just be like well that is what someone who's in her position would say they want they're just envious or they want like they have to kind of rationalize it in some way they don't want to actually feel like geez should we really change dramatically how we're living or what we're thinking or what we do how we do things if you grow up wanting for absolutely nothing yeah. no matter how good a person you are the lack of exposure means you're automatically i don't know like i don't want to say this as like a as a as a 
as a truism, you know what I mean? But it just means that it's harder for you to empathize right. with what Beatrice is saying. How can you really be sympathetic to something yeah. you've never experienced or never had the opportunity to understand? Yeah. And it's not even to say I'm absolving anybody in that position of their responsibility to actually at least make an effort to, mm -hmm. because the whole movie, these people aren't doing that. Yeah. They just want to eschew her the whole yeah. time. Go to sleep, please. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think maybe, honestly, you should just go to bed. Just go to Tara's room, okay? I, it, it's fine. Thank Didn't you. bother him. He's a tough guy. That beautiful rhinoceros, Kathy. Why? Don't think about it. We don't want to deal with it. It's too much. Yeah. I'd rather not deal with it. And I think that is disrespectful mm. of being a human being. Yeah. I yeah. think the greatest contribution that we can give to each other, to really being valuable people to, to, to anyone, yeah. is understanding or trying to understand or yeah. realizing that my life is different for yeah. sure and your life is different, but both of of our experiences matter yeah. Yeah. and we can both learn from each other you know what i mean like yeah. even if i live a disgusting life you can learn from me yeah. in some in some way yeah i think the, the closest she got to affecting them was when she was singing which is probably why you could talk about the power of music where it transcends these normal barriers people have towards others when she's singing and they're all kind of like even doug's kind of starting to get more interested in his posture changes and he's yeah. less closed off and they're all kind of you know i think sometimes that's when you have to use different ways of communication to break through those normal barriers people have when Beatrice is talking to the other wives about needing more old souls in the world because everything is falling apart and yeah. we're in trouble and everything is dying and, and you know she talks about that and they're all kind of like okay, that, that you girl know. you know her, yeah. her vagina is mean, all over the oh, internet yeah, and they just start talking just about a reality like, star and she's just she's like, and she's like oh my god yeah and yeah. it has warts and yeah. do you want to see the pictures yeah. and she's just like we're on what different is this? worlds. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys seen the pictures of Zoe Mars? Yes. What is that about? So there's these pictures all over the internet that she apparently sent to her gynecologist of her vagina. Oh. Poor girl. She's herpes. Ugh. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. So she has all these crusty red inflamed sores mm -hmm. all over her vagina. I mean, if you see the pictures, you want to see the pictures? <laughs> I'm to eat. Oh, that was another thing that I, that I thought was interesting. Again, the disagreement on how two people that are in this industry of big big money making talk about Grant says, you know, I feel like you can never get to know your employees because they're always, oh, yeah. you know, trying to please you and they're always phony towards you. And mm -hmm. Doug's like, actually, I think it's, that's when you do get to know people, people the best because you get to see their egos and their insecurities and their their authority issues and everything, which mm -hmm. I kind of agree with both. And that's yeah. kind of the thing. And that's where a lot of times when people disagree, both people are usually right or, or wrong in a way or yeah. right in a way, but they're looking at it from different perspectives yeah. there's only seeing one part of the elephant or whatever that analogy is where yeah. one person's feeling the hoof of the elephant and then the other's the trunk it's yeah. still they're both still talking about the elephant but they're different parts exactly. so they're both right instead of trying to heal all these people it'd be better just to find the source of all this suffering destroy the source you know what's the source what you think i'm the source she doesn't think that i think she does all pain comes from one source. Although, what, what, what do you say? What do you think the source is? I was thinking, is it greed, money, violence, power, yeah. oppression? I don't know. What, what would you say? I'm not sure. I wrote that yeah. because I really liked it. Yeah. You know, and I was kind of trying to figure out what she meant. Yeah. What do you do? You have an idea of what she may have meant? I, I think maybe it is um, lack of understanding, lack of it's it's self selfishness. Maybe is is the root. If you had to come up with one word to be the root of all pain, which one seems to get closest to it? Because you're like, yeah, there's power, but power could still be kind of more of a tool that could be used for good. Um, I see selfishness. I think selfishness. The Because selfishness means also the inability to, first of all, be altruistic and selfless, but also to be able to understand and want to see other people's point of view and their situations and everything. So unless there's a better word for that ego or something or whatever, arrogance, ignorance, something like that is maybe the root of all pain. Then. That's yeah. all I have. Yeah, that was a lot. Yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> but we would love to to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so yeah. comment down below and share yeah. your thoughts. Yes. Yeah, we awesome. really appreciate that. Yeah, please do. Hope you enjoyed and uh until next time. Bye. Take care. That's a wrap. <laughs>